Several years ago when my oldest son was very small, I can remember the first time that he was outside in the dark and looked up in the sky and could see all the stars, the moon, everything up there, and the wonder that was in his eyes. And you could get up close and personal with all that with a proper telescope. But most telescopes are hard to use if you don't have any idea what you're doing. But this telescope here promises to change that, making astronomy and exploring the reaches of space so easy that any dummy can do it. So let's check it out. But first, welcome back to the workshop. I'm Jeff and this is Fun Size Adventures where we're all about helping you and your family get out on little adventures in your own backyard and beyond. First things first, this is the StarSense Explorer LT by Celestron. And this telescope retails for about $250. Full disclosure, Celestron sent this to me for free to review. They sent it to a lot of other people who know a lot about astronomy, have whole channels dedicated to it. I am not one of those people. The only thing I know about astronomy is that the moon is made of cheese, right? Alexa, what is the moon made out of? The moon is made from lunar rock. Well, okay, so I don't know anything about astronomy. <laughs> But this telescope and the StarSense system promises to make it so easy that any dummy like me can figure it out. So first we're gonna see what's in the box. We're going to set it up. Then we're going to do the little bit of calibration that promises to be super easy and then see what we can see with this telescope. Inside, the large box are several smaller boxes as well as the instructions. Code that might be important later. So box one, nice big tripod. And the accessory tray, box two. Some sort of guide thing there. Got a little eyepiece thing, another eyepiece thing, a little bolt, a third eyepiece, piece of metal that says it's some sort of tool, I believe. Lens cleaner cloth, and a little bag that has what in it? All right, so that's the dock that your phone goes in. This one says it's empty but I trust no one, so I'm gonna check. Aha, yes, it's empty. Fourth box has the actual telescope itself. I don't know, the cannon, the telescope cannon, telescope tube, pipe. I don't know what you call it, as well as whatever this is. Oh, that's just a couple more though. Little. little knobbies. Pick that up, put that over here safely, and then let's get the whole box. And now that's gonna sit on that side of my workshop for the next six months until I get around to cleaning it up. So, we got this. We need a knife. All right. Whoa. Whoops. This is not going well. Do not eat. It looks so appetizing though. Don't look directly at the sun. This really is for dummies, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not gonna do the full setup step by step, but I'm just gonna follow the instructions, tell you whether or not they are simple and easy to understand. Cue the time lapse. Bow. All right, so following the instructions, everything was pretty basic, no major issues. As far as build quality goes, the telescope itself seems good. I don't have a lot of experience with telescopes, so I can tell you that it all seems like it should hold up to normal use. The one thing that does seem a little bit chintzy to me is the tripod it's on, but that's because I'm used to using camera tripods that are much more heavy duty. But it seems like it will work well for what it has to do. And there's a bunch of knobs here that you tighten to hold it still, loosen when you need to move things around. But the next step is gonna be to take this outside and align this finder scope, I believe it's called, with what the telescope sees. We're gonna take the cap off the end as well as the cap off of there. You pick an object that's at least a quarter mile away, I believe, which I'm not gonna be able to do in my yard. I'll have to take this somewhere else where I have longer visibility here. There's trees all around that block me from seeing that far. So you pick, you look through here, you get, find a spot that's recognizable, get it in focus, and then you use this, and this has a dial here and a dial here, where you can turn and adjust it, and get the red dot that turns on when you turn this dial to line up with the same thing that you can see through here, and that way you know that it's looking the right way. Right now I could do it with something that's closer than a quarter of a mile, but I would assume the further the better, since later on we're going to be looking into space. And any small error is gonna be compounded in the millions of light years we're looking into space. 
I guess. Then once you get the finder scope set, that's where the paper instructions end and it says to continue in the app. And I thought I was good to go, that I was gonna come back out at night and I did that last night and apparently there's one more step we gotta do during the day before we can come out at night. So let's move on to that. All right, so we're gonna set it in here. Actually, we gotta remove this lid here. Like that. Now we're gonna set this in here. Boink. And then we're gonna click the little button that's flashing there. We're gonna say needs alignment. All right, center camera over mirror with something. With this knob? Yes. Oh, look at that. I see. We're moving up. Oh, and that goes side to side. There we go. So let's click next. Drag image to align crosshairs with the eyepiece view. So we're going to look at the eyepiece and we can see nothing now in the eyepiece. Find something and then get this locked in. Let's drag the crosshairs. It's right at the tippy top of that farther tree. Can I zoom? Oh, I can zoom in. That'll make it easier. All right, so I think that's good. All right, so up here it says, Star Sans can't find the scope position in the daylight. Try it outdoors at night. All right, so we're to the point where if you're pointing this at the night sky, the camera lens looks at the mirror, which can see stars and can figure out where in the sky it's pointing. But we can't do anything during the day because it can't do that. Now we gotta wait for a night where it's not raining and where I don't have to get up at five o'clock the next morning, which is gonna be tough. So as you can see, it is still not nighttime. I took this out a couple nights ago and it quickly became evident that I just lack the equipment to properly be able to film anything that was worth showing to you guys. Because I either had lights on so you could see us and the telescope, but with those on, you could not really properly use the telescope. So it just, there, it just wasn't working out and you couldn't really see that much. I don't have a camera that can look through the lens and see what the telescope sees very well either. So it's probably easiest if I just describe it to you and believe me, you're not missing much. So I'll start off with what I liked about it and I'll go into what I didn't like about it and then I'll finish up with whether or not I think it's worth it or something you should look into getting yourself. What I liked about it is the whole StarSense app enabled aspect of it was good because when I came out here about 10 o'clock that night I live where there's not a lot of big cities nearby so you could see thousands of stars with your naked eye. What this allowed you to do was decide what star you were actually looking at and look at that exact star and from an educational standpoint that was great because then you can instead of just looking at all these stars you can kind of narrow it down on this one star learn its name learn facts about it. it has all kinds of different facts in the app so from an educational standpoint, the whole app aspect of it worked flawlessly. I, I had my doubts about it because I know that cell phone cameras don't work that well in low light conditions, which this obviously was, but it somehow worked, so I'm not gonna question it. And then moving on to what I didn't like. Now, this isn't the highest powered telescope. So when you are looking at a star with your naked eye, it looks like a little tiny pin dot of light in the sky. With this telescope, from the best that I could figure out how to use it, not having really no idea what I'm doing, it kind of expanded that to, it's like the size of a pencil point in the sky, <laughs> which kind of seems underwhelming, especially when in the app you have like high quality images of what it looks like with a professional grade telescope. When you're looking at that and then you see what you see, it's like, it just kind of creates this contrast where you select something in the phone and you're like, I want to look at that. And then you go to actually look at it and it just doesn't, it just doesn't stand up to what you saw there. So it's kind of, kind of underwhelming. I actually spent some time yesterday and went online, did some more research, to try to figure out if there's just something that I'm doing wrong. And it kind of just seems like that's just it. It's a lower powered telescope. So it's more for looking at closer things like other planets and the moon. And I tried to go back out last night and do it, but we have trees all around our backyard and everything that I could possibly look at that was more in our solar system was below the tree line. But from what I've heard with this telescope, you can see very good detail of the moon. You can see a little bit of the, the rings of Saturn and different things like that. So we're definitely gonna try to take this out another time and do that, but I, and unfortunately, in the name of trying to finish up this video was not able to get to that. So lastly, is it something that I think you should get? I could have just laid on the ground and looked at the stars and had a good time that night. There was so much visible just to my eye. And then this kind of just became an apparatus that if you thought you were gonna see something super high detailed, it was just something that kind of got in the way. I mean, it almost detracted from that experience. But with the use of the app and actually being able to learn about these different things that you can kind of see, but not really that well detailed. I think that if you are homeschoolers like we are, from an educational standpoint, I see where this being one of um, Celestron's lower priced telescopes, this could be something that's good for homeschool families or people that 
just have kids that are just getting into it, but I think it's something that if you're really serious about it, you're gonna outgrow really quick. But that's just my opinion as somebody who's not really into astronomy, somebody who doesn't really enjoy staying up late. So I, I think by and large, astronomy is just really not for me. Once we get into the fall and it's getting dark out at four o'clock, we're gonna give this a lot more tries. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video at that point. But if you think that this is something that you're gonna be able to see like these super crisp images of like far off nebula and different galaxies and stuff, it's just not really gonna happen with this telescope. At least from what I can tell, having no idea what I'm talking about. If you are a astronomy expert who's used this telescope, please leave a comment and tell me what I'm doing wrong. I would agree appreciate it greatly. <laughs> so to answer the question we started out with, does this help any idiot like myself be able to do astronomy in a meaningful way? Without the StarSense app system, you would never be able to tell what exact star you were looking at without looking at tons of charts and having some idea. So if you don't know anything like me, the StarSense system is definitely great. And if you're buying even a lower power telescope, something that you should go for. But if you want to be able to see more detail of farther off deep space objects, you're probably going to want one of their bigger, more capable telescopes. But after watching that, you still don't think that this is something you're interested in, check out this video up here. I'll show you another way to have fun in the dark, in the backyard with your kids. See you over in that video. Until next time, get out there and have a... Fun's ice adventures of your own. Woo! Woo!